You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Little Miracles with your host, Penelope. Through her own personal healing, Penelope can transform all aspects of your life through numerous modalities and techniques, including Reiki, energy healing, cranial sacral therapy, and more. So now, please welcome the host of Little Miracles, Penelope. Welcome. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We're here to talk about, well, little miracles. Things that are little and easy for us to do that might make a really big difference in our lives. I, well, I chose to do this radio show because I have, well, I have 30 years of experience in holistic healing and there are some things that I wanted to well, let everybody know before, well, before I couldn't let you all know. God, that sounds silly, doesn't it? Well, today, we're going to talk about nutrition. And I started thinking about nutrition. Now, what fun things do I did I like to eat? Well, when I was a kid, I liked to have Velveeta and, well, Velveeta and corned beef hash. Okay, that's not really good for you. I'm just saying uh, but we're, we'll talk a little bit, little bit more about it. And what else did I like to do? Oh, yeah, I love Twinkies. Well, <laughs> Twinkies and Velveeta, I'm saying that's going to be a recipe for indigestion at this age. So, well, I have my guest today. My guest today is, sorry, got distracted. My guest today is Robin Flipsy. She is a certified nutritionist, and of course, I have uh, Valerie Evans, a Unity Church elder, with me today, and we're going to talk about nutrition. So, so what about nutrition? Well, you know, I figure if I eat, if I eat a bunch of Twinkies, I'm going to be, I'm I'm going to live forever. Because Twinkies have, Twinkies have a shelf life that is unlimited. Doesn't that scare you? If it doesn't scare you, it really should. <laughs> um, and Velveeta, well, you know, Velveeta tastes really good. Honest to God, it tastes really great with corned beef hash. But is there anything really real in Velveeta? Well, I think there is. But Velveeta, for just like Twinkies, Velveeta does not have to be refrigerated while it's on sale at the grocery store. So it can stay on the on the grocery store shelf for freaking ever. Robin, so what do you think about that? Robin, are you there? Okay. My first thought, Penny, is that when foods have a lot of preservatives in them, that does not transfer to you when you consume them. They don't preserve you and allow you to live longer. So they only help keep the food, as you say, shelf stable, may not need to be refrigerated. It may not break down or get spoiled, but you do not benefit in the same way from the preservatives in those foods. So um, they're not really a a prescription for longevity. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I I had the wrong idea when I was a kid, huh? 
Oh, well. well, yes, but when you were a kid, I can't imagine that you were thinking about living a long life because most children are focused on just the immediate enjoyment of food and, and don't have to worry about what it's going to feel like to be 60 someday. Well, amen, amen. So, Valerie, um, what what was your – did you have something awful that you liked when you were a kid, like, you know, Velveeta and corned beef hash? Oh, Wow. Um, first of all, I wanted to live off of Alpita. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. I loved the macaroni and cheese. I remember I made off it before she knew there was real cheese. Because you, when we were growing up, Alpita was cheese. Or at least yeah. we thought it was cheese. So we just, you know, all I wanted, I wanted a gr- grilled cheese sandwich with tomato soup, and that was my favorite lunch. As for anything that was not nutritious, unfortunately or fortunately, my mother would not let anything into the house that was not nutritious except for cereal, like Fruit Loops. <laughs> yeah, right, I right. could have that, but things that weren't nutritious, candy and stuff, I couldn't have any of that. I was a, I was a, my, my childhood was blighted. <laughs> but, I um, tell you, oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you, thank you. Velveeta. So what about you, Robin? Are you going to admit to having Velveeta when you were a kid? Well, I I had it, but it wasn't a household staple, and it, it wasn't something that made a big impression on me. But I had the good fortune of having a mom who was a, a really good cook and a very serious homemaker. I mean, she took every lesson that she learned in a home ec class very seriously. So um, we ate a lot of uh, vegetables, and we had a salad every night, and a dessert would be fruit. And, you know, that was what our household did, so that's what I knew. I, I guess I didn't know other households. Households might have been having canned soup and Velveeta cheese sandwiches and, you know, <laughs> cupcakes or Twinkies for dessert because unless I was invited to a friend's house and saw that, I liked it. Obviously, it's food that really tastes good. The food uh, manufacturers know how to hit the magic spot where the salt and the sugar and the fat, you know, all comes together to be delicious. But my mom's food was delicious, too, and it, it simply was that I grew up with her you know, setting the menu, and and that's what I knew. And I think the big message here is that that is what shapes everybody's eating habits is those early life exposures and experience. And I'm sorry that Valerie felt deprived, I guess, because she didn't get to have as much of the fun stuff. But when you went to a birthday party, I'm sure there were goodie bags or the holidays like Halloween and, you know, Easter or whatever holidays you celebrate where candy and cookies and treats are part of it. And, um, In a way, if we could keep those fun things designated to just special occasions, we could have them on those occasions and and not have anything to worry about. But they're an everyday part of most children's lives. I mean, almost in every meal part of their lives. And that's not good. That's where they earn their bad reputation. Because if you're eating that instead of other basic foods, uh, that's a setup for, you know, problems. Gotcha, gotcha. So is American is American cheese as bad as Velveeta? Uh, no, and I see I would have a problem calling either of them bad, Penny, and this is where we have to keep in mind that no food is bad for you unless it's spoiled. I mean, unless there's like bacteria and flies and maggots on it and whatever, and that could give you food poisoning. But a food isn't bad for you until we talk about how much of it are you eating and what else are you eating? Because if the only thing you eat is Velveeta cheese, I'm not sure I could say that the cheese was bad for you. Then I'd say, why didn't you eat any fruits or vegetables or have an egg or have a glass of milk or some baked beans or something else? Because there were so many things missing from your diet. That was a bigger concern than if the only thing you ate is Velveeta cheese. We can't really blame the cheese as being a bad food. You just had a bad diet all the way around. So. Ah. Uh, okay. American cheese, Velveeta cheese, I would never call either one of them bad. I would simply say, what else are you eating and how often and how much Velveeta or American cheese are you having? Because they fit. They have value. Um, and if they taste good and help you eat other things, like Velveeta cheese on broccoli is a very good way to get broccoli into people. And ah. we all know broccoli is good for you. So do we want to throw out the Velveeta cheese and lose the broccoli along the way? Or do we want to <laughs> say, okay, melt some 
they'll eat on that broccoli and kids will be digging into it just like they do macaroni and cheese. Well, very good. Well, we're going to go out for a word from our sponsor. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com. Com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We're talking about food. We're talking about nutrition. So, well, so Robin, tell me about tell me about what we should what we should think when we want to eat. What should well, we Penny, think about? People uh, know they want to eat when they get hungry, and so they they have a physical sensation, and that's certainly what gets it all started. But we also have a lot of other cues that we might want to eat that have nothing to do with hunger. We see something delicious on a TV commercial, or we smell popcorn in a movie theater, or we're at a meeting or a gathering socially, and somebody offers us food, and we simply accept it to be polite. So we, we have a lot of different reasons why we start eating, and then we have to deal with, well, what's the best choice to make in this situation? And uh, many people put no thought into that, and so they can be pretty much um, dictated by whatever's just around and easy to get to. But if you think about it at all, then you have a chance to recognize that you're fueling and nourishing your body. You're putting in the ingredients that can help make you well or keep you healthy or that can contribute to disease and illness, even though it won't happen tomorrow if you're eating, you know, a lot of the higher fat, higher salt, whatever, high sugar foods over and over, day in and day out, you do end up at a high risk for a lot of heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and so on, even types of cancer down the road. So I don't think there's anybody listening right now who couldn't tell me the answer to your question, who couldn't say what the good foods are or the basic food groups and that they should try to include them, the groups being things like vegetables and fruits and whole grains and protein foods, whether from fish, meat, animals, tofu, and dairy foods, yogurt, milk, cheese, or substitutes, and healthy fats, things like olive oils and nuts and avocados. So I, I, if there's anybody left out there who doesn't know what those things are, please call me or email me, you know, rlflipsy at aol.com, because it would be a miracle. There's just nonstop exposure to the information, but it's not being used 
often enough or, you know, um, consistently enough for people to benefit. So we do see a huge rise in preventable diseases or what we call non-communicable diseases that are the result of bad diets. And you can start with obesity as, as the worst of it because once you have obesity, that sets you up for diabetes or certain types of cancer, as I said, or heart disease. Very few thin people get those diseases. Even when they have a, a poor diet, the overweight or obese condition seems to be the beginning of um, a lot of other uh, chronic diseases. But again, they're preventable. They are not due to your genes. They're not due to your environment. They are due to uh, lifestyle, really, food choices and lack of exercise or a whole bunch of other ways that we're not doing enough to take care of ourselves. And then when you um, can't function the way you want to and you're getting help, you realize, oh, if I eat differently, maybe I can control this. And they start correcting their diet after the damage has been done. But I always like to tell people if you do the you know, the corrective work in the beginning, then those problems will not ever catch up with you. You can prevent many of those problems and diseases just by changing the way you eat. And, and then, of course, there's other things like getting exercise and sleeping and managing stress. But certainly what you put in your mouth and eat day in and day out is a choice. There's nobody being forced or unconceivable that there's people being forced to eat things they don't want to eat all throughout their lives. Okay, that's that's cool. All right. Well, so is there um, is there are there certain foods that you think are really good for us humans? Oh, sure. I think that the the piece we want to remember is all around the world, people are eating <laughs> on every continent, in every climate, in every zone of the world. People eat. We do not all eat the same, but we basically have the same requirements. And we use the food that's available uh, to meet those requirements. So uh, I, I like to always admit that I had my first taste of sushi, some kind of raw fish rolled up with rice and seaweed and so on. You know, when I was in my 40s, I had never had it before. It wasn't here, wow. popular, common. And yet... You know, little children are starting their lives on this and eat it all their lives, and they get introduced to Chicken McNuggets and, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken when they get exposed to popular culture. But they've eaten this very, you know, fresh delicacy as a standard part of their diet. So there are many, many ways to eat well, and the key to that, no matter where you are in the world, is the variety of food. It, it is never going to come down to just eating three foods or two foods or certain superfoods. There needs to be turnover, change in, in, in variety in the choices to make sure any nutrient your body needs will certainly show up if you eat a range of foods. So when I say variety, I can mention fruit. And some people can say, oh, I have a banana every day. And I say, well, jolly good for you. How about having a clementine once in a while when it's in season or a watermelon or a fresh pear? You know, you, you want to change up the types of fruit you eat and even have it fresh sometimes. You can have it dried. You can have it as juice, like 100% orange juice. You can even have it canned. If, if you can only get canned peaches in the middle of winter, well, that's still better than not having peaches at all. And the value of those peaches is not greatly diminished by the fact that you're eating them canned instead of fresh. So the variety is important no matter where you are in the world with whatever diet you have. And most people achieve that just because of the change of seasons that changes what's available. But if you don't kind of turn over your diet, uh, that would be considered a, a, a way you might limit your nutrient intake, um, and that could be a problem. And of course, oh. your 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 budget will determine a big chunk of that. What you can afford, and maybe even what you have the resources uh, in terms of cooking skills and kitchen equipment to to do when it comes to preparing food. I would never expect everyone to go back to growing their own food or to go back to buying only fresh food and making their own bread and making all their own, you know, meals from scratch without using anything that's uh, semi-prepared or convenient. And that would be really hard to do anyway. I mean, uh, it wouldn't be 
necessary and would be reasonable. But depending on how man, many different resources you have, you can get to a better diet, obviously, if you do know how to cook. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're going to go out for a word from our sponsors. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We'll be right back. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We're talking to Robin Flipsy, a nutrition um, consultant and, well, a certified kind of nutritionist um, today, as well as Valerie Evans. We're talking about what, well, what's good to eat. So, Robin, I I just love how much training you have. What, what, gosh, what, what should we do when we eat, when we choose food? Well, I think it, it's so basic that you need to have a plan to eat because as I might've mentioned earlier, you're going to get hungry anyway, you're going to need to eat. And if you don't give it any forethought, you're going to be at the mercy of whatever's laying around, whatever comes out of a vending machine, whatever fast, easy, quick, and it may not always be the best option. But since you know you have to eat every day, then having a little bit of a plan, which might begin with, I don't know, making a list of what stuff you want to have in the house and then going to the store or calling a grocery that delivers and making sure that that food is available. So as the week unrolls, you have some fruit on the counter or some um, yogurt in the refrigerator or, uh, you know, a loaf of bread to use to make some sandwiches with the tuna that you ordered or whatever. But the planning comes from making sure that the right food or the food you want to have is available in the house. And then you have to remember to take it with you if you're someone who goes to school or work or leaves the house every day for the bulk of the day. Uh, and that would mean packing it up so that you're not left without anything, you know, when you get to wherever you're headed. Uh, and many, many people brown bag it or use a little cooler or whatever, but at least a part of your day is already decided because you left the house with something, you know, some hummus and some vegetables to dip in it, some carrot sticks and maybe a box of raisins and, like I said, maybe a container of yogurt. And those are things you can use during the day to satisfy hunger and snacks and so on. Uh, and then I think you have to recognize that if you want to eat out or you're going to order prepared food to be delivered, whatever, that you, you know what, what choices are available to you that can do a good job of it. So, 
everybody's within 10 minutes of a Chinese restaurant. I'm pretty sure that's true across the whole United <laughs> right, States right. of America. Yes, it is. But if you are going to call for Chinese food, you can look over that menu once or twice. It probably offers the option of getting brown rice instead of white, and that would be a simple change to make for the better, to get a better uh, whole grain. And you can look for the dishes that are predominantly vegetables instead of predominantly sauce and meat. Um, and there are plenty of them on a Chinese menu. I do it all the time, actually. Sometimes I say, you know, I, I really want as many different vegetables in that chow mein as possible and a little chicken or pork or whatever shrimp is going to go with it. But I emphasize the vegetables. And that's like eating a Chinese salad at the, you know, at the end of the day. You've just had a big bowl of vegetables vegetables in a sort of stir fry configuration. But right. making a smarter decision, even when you're resorting to convenience, can get the right varieties of foods in your day so that you're not just going from one bag of chips to the next and whatever the snacks would be. And again, I have nothing against chips. I just don't think that you can live on them and you need to have a way to fit in some other um, whole foods, as we like to call them, fruit, vegetable, whole grains, um, more, you know, uh, unprocessed food. Gotcha, and if people gotcha. don't know how to cook, really good idea, instead of just watching cooking shows on TV, stand up and learn to cook from a video or take a cooking class and start basic. You had a great speaker on last week who uh, went to cooking school, culinary school. And I mean, it's oh, a yes. skill you'll yeah. use yourself the rest of your life, if you never hire out to cook for other people, it really helps to know what to do when you're in a kitchen and you have a pantry and a refrigerator and you have to scrounge up a meal. I'm pretty sure I could make dinner in 20 minutes out of any oddball selection of things I find in my house just because I, I have this – big repertoire in my mind of ways to combine some little bit of this with a little bit of that and put a sauce on it and cook it up and make a, a great meal. But I I do know a lot about cooking and food, which makes that easier for me. There are so That's many awesome. people that cook out there. I mean, yeah. really, I saw a show about uh, finances, and they were trying to get this girl to, you know, lower a little outside thing she was buying. And they said, if you would just cook um, your dinner three times a week instead of eating out, you would be okay. And you know what she said? She said, I can't do that. Right. Oh, right. no. No, she was serious. I can't do that. Oh, that's Well, they awful. think they can't. And, oh, and maybe... From where she was, you know, eating out three times a week, the idea of going home and cooking, she didn't understand how to do the timing of it. Like, I'm so tired when I come home. I don't want to slave in the kitchen. She thought it was a big chore. But I would even say there are things that are so quick and easy to prepare but are still going to cost less money, like frozen um, meals in a bowl, let's say, a uh, really healthy concoction that may have either Mexican seasoning or Indian flavors, if you like that, or certainly more straight up American, Italian type things. But it'll have a whole grain pasta or a whole grain rice or even couscous in it. It'll have some beans or lentils or it might have, you know, vegetables. And then the protein may come from tofu or it may come from chicken or chick or pork or beef. But the point is, it's a a frozen meal in a bowl that cooks very quickly in the microwave oven and everything's in there. You don't have to cut anything, chop anything, season anything, but have the chance to eat something that you would probably pay. I know in Asbury Park in the area I live, you would pay $15, $20 to get that in one of the cool little restaurants that are selling bowls of grains and vegetables and fruits like I just described. <laughs> oh, you're making me so hungry. I have yeah. recently uh, taken up uh, getting such uh, kind of frozen entrees. And actually, I got um, a frozen entree um, by Healthy Choice called a Power Bowl, mm. and which, which talked about that it had sort of some um, power foods in it. and mm -hmm. But, well, that doesn't really matter because it really was good, tasted good. So what do you think about the Power Bowl idea? That seems to be a fad nowadays. It is a fad, but it's a good one um, because it gives people 
uh, a chance to have all those different food groups in one bowl, and they're mixed together in season. So even if you're somebody who kind of doesn't like mushrooms or maybe you didn't think you'd like tofu, it's buried under all that other stuff and probably uh, goes down a lot easier than if you had a flat plate where there was a pile of green stuff on one corner and a pile of brown stuff on another corner that might be the grain and a pile of, you know, protein that might be the tofu or the chicken or the fish, whatever. And people eyeball that and they kind of think they don't like those piles um, well enough to eat it. But when it's a mixture, it's a whole new taste sensation. You're really not separating out what any one part of it tastes like. Every fork load is a blended flavor. Awesome. Well, very good. We need to go out for a word from our sponsors. This is Penelope Neeson bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We'll be right back. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com isn't it time to sell your property today learn the my short sale guru way Welcome back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We've been talking about nutrition. Well, and uh, well, uh, on a sidebar, sort of a sidebar, is I found out recently that Robin was an author. So, Robin, tell me tell me about your books. I will, uh, and I will clarify also that my credential is that I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. So that's quite different from just the generic title of being a certified nutritionist, which just about oh, anybody can you. use I'm that sorry. title. It could be. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, you know, sometimes you go in a health food store and the person ringing up your sale is going to say they're a certified nutritionist and they may not have any training or education. But I am a registered dietitian nutritionist, which takes a lot of training and a lot of continuing education. But I wrote two books in particular um, that were very specific to target audiences. My first book was called The Wedding Dress Diet. And as you can imagine, it was aimed at women who were planning to marry and suddenly got it in their heads that they had to lose a lot of weight in order to look fabulous in the gown and in all the photos that are definitely going to be taken that day. And I had a private practice at the time seeing um, people for various nutrition concerns. And I would always have these women coming in who wanted an unrealistic weight loss uh, in time for the wedding. And I just thought, boy, these women are killing themselves. This is absurd. And it's not even possible. So they're going to show up at their wedding so weak and exhausted and, you know, drained. They're not even going to have a great wedding because of the effort of dieting. So it occurred to me that maybe a book was needed to address this. And indeed it was. And it was really a phenomenal um, you know, focus on something that nobody had really talked about. And 
after my book came out and I had lots of interviews and appearances and so on about it, there was a TV show that came along called Buff Brides. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but oh they took all this idea and it was about getting into shape by training, you know, so that your arms look muscular and that you have the right proportions or whatever, using exercise as a way to get in shape. And again, some of these ideas go to an extreme, but the premise that I was interested in is that women should be healthy, strong, and satisfied with themselves, not trying to turn themselves into something else that they never were and probably will never be able to maintain anyway. Uh, So it was an empowerment story not just a nutrition story. Awesome. Uh, and then my other book is called Fighting the Freshman 15, and that was aimed at fr- college freshmen typically who go away from home for the first time and they have all this freedom and no supervision and a food plan that lets them eat all they want, and there is a you know, tendency to gain weight, and the um, guys gain weight too, but they don't suffer for it. The women gain weight, and it's socially a disaster for them because, um, obviously, women are judged differently for size. And I would have these young girls, when they would come home from their freshman year at college uh, for their Christmas break, and they're 10 pounds already overweight, coming into the office like pleading for the – Sure, like get me back to my original size. And it can't be done overnight, but it also was some chance to help them see how this freedom and all of the parties and the late night eating and the, you know, socializing had just taken them away from the very basic common sense things they might have been doing when they were in high school and had regular meals and parents who were keeping tabs on them and that they needed to learn to take care of themselves and not think of being away at college is a place where there's no rules and no limits um, because that was going to be something they, they'd have a real problem with once they finished college and now had jobs and lives you know, beyond school. They had to learn how to take care of themselves, set limits for themselves, take the time to do what's best, like go, go to the gym or use the athletic facilities at the school instead of just you know hanging around eating and drinking with their friends uh, uh, without – being, you know, uh, physically active. And so the book was, again, empowering for women and an opportunity to help dispel this myth that going to college was automatically going to require gaining weight because it was all about the cafeteria food. And believe me, it was not the cafeteria food. Most people don't eat much of it anyway. They do all their eating (laughs) back in the dorm and out of kegs and party you know, drinks uh, at fraternity parties and stuff where there's a lot of alcohol consumed. But I cannot blame the cafeteria food because most of them stay really far away from a lot of it. (laughs) Wow, wow. So are your books uh, still available like at Amazon or someplace? They are available uh, by mail order uh, at the websites for both books. And I believe you can still, you know, get to them through Amazon. But if not, it'll channel you to the websites, um, The Wedding Dress Diet and Freshman15.com. By by Robin Flipsy. By Robin uh, Flipsy, yes. Wonderful. And and those, uh, the books are on? Websites by the name at uh, the name of the book, or or what are they? Well, you know what, I, the, because I I don't want to give anybody um, misinformation. If they go to my website, which is robinflipsy dot com, then it has books in print as one of the menu tabs, and there they are with the website, and they can click on to order directly from my own personal website, robinflipsy dot com. So uh, that's the fastest, easiest, most accurate way to get to them. How Wonderful. Do you, how do you and spell your last name? Yeah, oh, that's... good. Uh, F like Frank, L I P S E, Flipsy. Okay. And it's Robin with a Y, R O B Y N. So I guess we need to get that straight. Robin, oh. R O B Y N, Flipsy, F L I P S E dot com. That's my website. My books are on there. Wonderful. Wonderful. And do you have an email in case people are uh, would like to ask you a question? Well, they can even get to the email through the website. And if they wish to um, follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is at EverydayRD. So E-V-E-R-Y, 
D-A-Y, every day, R-D for registered dietitian, and I do all food and nutrition tweeting on Twitter. But uh, from my website, you can get to the Twitter account, the Facebook account, the Instagram, the whole mix mosh of social media, and there is a chance to contact me via email. That's wonderful. Well, we have to go out for another word from our sponsors. This is Penelope Neeson bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We'll be right back. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Welcome back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you Little Miracles on the on the uh, blah, on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. I'm forgetting everything I'm thinking of. Okay, so so for this segment, I'd like to talk about an article I just read. It was, the name of the article was 11 Nutrients We Need. And if you Google that on the Internet, you'll find it immediately. So it talked about, well, 11, 11 things we need, including... Carbohydrates, I can't even say it, carbohydrates, proteins, fruits, vegetables, water, vitamins, minerals, and it specified calcium, sodium, potassium, and omega-3 fatty acids. So, Robin, what do you think about that, and do you think we really need all those ingredients? Well, I got to tell you something. It's an inaccurate description uh, as far as what's a nutrient and what was on that list. So let me clarify that for you. If an essential nutrient is a compound that your body needs to survive and without it, you would die. So essential means essential. You got to have it. And yes, protein is essential. Protein is a nutrient, but fruit is a food. food. Fruit isn't a nutrient. It's a food. So the list had a kind of a mix mosh. It had carbohydrates. Yes, right. that is a nutrient. But it had what else besides fruit? I, I kind of... Was, uh, uh, well, uh, vegetables. Uh, it yeah, had... See, that's a food. And it's a food that's full of other nutrients that are important, like vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients. It's just a weird list, to be honest with you. Water is considered (laughs) with nutrients, believe it or not, because we actually cannot survive without water if you consider it, um, you know, a fluid for hydration purposes. And if you never actually drank water in its pure form, even the the beverages you do drink, whether it's tea or coffee or what beer, it's made from water. So you are getting water. But okay. I don't want anyone listening to confuse the fact that 
food, as in all the million fruits on the planet and the vegetables on the planet, they are not classified as nutrients. They're foods, and they have nutrients in them. But the nutrients are things like protein and carbohydrate and fat. Fat is a nutrient, whether it comes from animal fat or oils like from olive oil. It's a nutrient. And minerals, calcium is a mineral. You can find it in food or you can take it as a calcium supplement, but it is a nutrient our bodies need. You cannot live without calcium. Um, and, and there's several other minerals. And then there's a not that long a list of vitamins which are essential, which means we must consume them because there's no other way for our bodies to have vitamin C, let's say. We must consume it. But it's found in plenty of foods. So if you eat those foods, you'll get the vitamin C. But just by comparison, most other mammals can make vitamin C. They have the ability to... Uh, produce it in their body so they don't ever have to eat an orange or a food with vitamin C in it because they make it themselves. But human beings, and interestingly enough, bats do not make vitamin C. We have to eat something that has it in it. I don't know why the connection with bats, bats, but yeah, they don't make oh it. My. So they need to, but they love berries and you know, <laughs> they happen to find plenty of sources of it. But um, that's pretty it, funny. Anyway. Yeah, a nutrient is essential if you must have it or you'll die. And I'd consider that good reason to eat the foods that contain those nutrients or, if necessary, take a supplement so that you have that nutrient because one way or the other, it's what's keeping you alive and well. So we need. So do we need uh, calcium and sodium, potassium and omega-3? Yes. Uh, the potassium and the calcium and the sodium are all minerals, and they are part okay. of the classification of nutrients called minerals. And, yes, they are essential. Um, omega-3s are a type of fat, and we do need omega-3s also. Uh, so they're nutrients, uh, and they, they are classified in the case of the calcium, potassium, and sodium as minerals. But the omega-3 is classified as a fat, and they're found in foods that we have to eat or we have to take supplements to get them. Interesting. Very are interesting. Are they starches? Well, no. Starches are is a layman's term for what the foods that carbohydrates are found in, like bread and pasta and rice and cereal grains, are sources of carbohydrate but when people are planning their menus they often say oh you know pasta is the starch at the meal it's the i don't know where that even started but it is a layman term it wouldn't be used scientifically to describe carbohydrates or you know the the kind of food we're talking about but again around the world you have to get your head out of monmouth county new jersey or the you know northeast or whatever and realize in Asia and India, where the greatest number of people on this planet currently live, they right. get seventy percent of their calories from rice, from that wow. one grain food, and then they have certain vegetables and certain uh, protein. Many people who are vegetarian or vegan in those cultures don't have any animal protein, but they use soy and tofu and so on. But the point is, seventy percent of the calories they consume come from rice and it is a carbohydrate and it is a staple to their diet everything is added to rice or mixed with rice but rice is always part of it and in other parts of the world different like think about alaska and the you know siberian parts of russia there are no vegetables there are no grains there's no fields of wheat they are using animal um mammals like walrus and polar bears and you know, seals and so on, as the mainstay of their diets. And they eat every part of that animal. They eat all the internal organs, they eat the flesh of it, and they use the oil and have a very small amount of carbohydrate or vegetable um, because it's not going to be available to them. They eat seaweed or sea plankton, things like that, um, because there's nothing growing on ice-covered ground. 
Wow. So you see what I mean? It, it, it's not that one diet is superior to the other. It's simply that all the basic parts have to be there and in a sufficient amount to keep you alive and healthy or well. And uh, we spend a lot of time in the privileged world, as I'd like to call the United States, because we we have a lot of food and it's very low cost and we seem to think – you know, we can pick and choose what we want to eat, uh, but uh, in other parts of the world, everything that's available gets eaten. Well, we're going to go out for a word from our sponsors. This is Penelope Neeson bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We'll be right back. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve this stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Welcome back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. We've been talking with Robin Flipsy. I, gosh, well, uh, <laughs> Robin, what, what, do you, what would you say your title is? I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. Thank you, Robin. A registered dietitian nutritionist. And, of course, Valerie Evans, we've been talking about what's good to eat and what's not. And, well, mostly things are okay to eat, as I, and this is, what, this is my take on it, mostly okay in small doses. Anyway, um, so, Robin, if we were, if I was lacking in energy, what should I eat? Well, Penny, many people think when they feel weak or fatigued or tired or whatever, that if they could just eat the right thing, it would, you know, boost their energy. But there are a lot of reasons why people might feel fatigue or weak or tired. Uh, One of them is lack of sleep. And there is no way to eat your way out of that. When you aren't getting enough sleep or good sleep, you're tired and then you may drink coffee or have other caffeine to try to stimulate you. But what your body's craving is rest or better sleep. So for some people, they do have to look at their habits at night and how well they do sleep and try to structure their lives so they can have more rest. And then for other people, those feelings may come from stress. They may have way too much going on in their lives and they can't quite keep tabs on it all and they may be worrying about money or worrying about family and kids and job responsibilities and no matter how well they eat those worries are still there when they're done eating a chocolate bar is not going to get you caught up and so that stressful feeling makes people uh, feel run down when what they really need is 
uh, a way to delegate some of those responsibilities or a way to spread them out so that they're not all lumped on, on one day or one weekend uh, so you can get some relief from the stress. But if there's not a lot of stress in your life and you're getting good sleep and you don't have any other real reason to feel fatigued, then I would say that if you are uh, looking for food to help you, you probably should eat something that has carbohydrates because that is the most immediate source of um, calories or energy, calories, I'm going to admit it, they're calories that your body can use for energy. We we really are just a little machine um, and the fuel that our machine runs on is carbohydrates. So if you feel tired and you eat a piece of meat, that's certainly okay, but it's not going to put energy, uh, calories that can be turned into energy into your body as quickly as if you had maybe you know, some bread and butter or a bowl of cereal or, um, I mean, a healthy enough carbohydrate, but that gives you that recharged fuel fast. In fact, a piece of fruit absolutely is nothing but carbohydrates that can help um, provide the fuel we need quickly. I just know that for many people, they confuse the notion of energy as a feeling, like feeling energized, feeling alert, feeling motivated, when in fact, energy is just fuel in our bodies and it comes from calories, which are in all foods, but the ones that are from carbohydrates are the quickest to give us that sense of um, fuel and energy. But it's not a special elixir. It's not some South American plant or herb or <laughs> crop that suddenly recharges you. Unfortunately, uh, it ain't that well, easy. Robin, uh, Robin, if you could quickly give your contact information and then we'll close. Okay. I'm Robin Flipsy, and I can be found on my website, robinflipsy.com, where you can also find my email address and my books and all of my social media platforms. Wonderful. Well, thank you. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you little miracles on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. Have a great week. This has been Little Miracles with your host, Penelope. Tune in each and every week to hear Penelope as she helps you design a life in harmony with your soul's purpose in order to live life to the fullest, only on Penelope's Little Miracles. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.